Hi, this is lesson 211 on triangle congruence theorems. Uh, in this lesson, we kind of review some congruence theorems that you should already know from previous course. Uh, and this kind of tries to answer the question, what does it mean for two shapes to be congruent? We've used the word congruent uh, in the last chapter. And in general, congruent means same measurement. Right? But here's a here's a longer definition uh, that applies to two shapes right so if two polygons have the same angle measures right we talk about like congruent angles and side lengths of all pairs of corresponding angles and sides as well so the corresponding angles are congruent and their sides are congruent then the two polygons are congruent, right? So if their parts are congruent, then we could say that the two shapes are congruent, right? Which also means that there is a sequence of rigid transformations. So transformation, rigid transformations being a translation, a rotation, reflection. Uh, so if you could do a transformation, that'll map one polygon onto the other, right? So they should fit perfectly. All right, so that's kind of more formal definition uh, that you should probably know. Um, and then hopefully we could try to simplify that uh, moving forward. Uh, so some triangle congruence theorems uh, that you should know. Um, this is, and I've taken this straight from uh, our book in the math notes section. I think at the end of this lesson, uh, there's the math notes. So all these are also in your book. Uh, and these might sound... Uh, familiar to some of you. And so the first one is side-side-side congruency, uh, abbreviated with three S's. And then we have side-angle-side, angle-side-angle, angle-angle-side, and I think there's one more, HL, which is hypotenuse leg. All right, so these are the five um, congruency theorems that you need to be familiar with um, and these are their definitions uh, or uh, that you need to be familiar with as well so uh, I'm not going to go through each one of these uh, but I'll let you read through them and see if you remember these from a previous uh, course uh, there is examples given uh, with triangles and they are given with uh, tick marks as well. So you'll notice there's no numbers here, but all the tick marks tell us which sides are equal or not. So in this case, the first one we have sides, a pair of sides that are the same, another pair of sides that are the same, and then a third pair of sides that are the same. So we have three sides, three corresponding sides that are the same measurement. So that would be side, side, side. Opposed to side angle side, where that means we have two sides in an angle but you'll notice the angle is actually in between the two sides. So it does matter the location of the angle. So pay, pay uh, close attention to that. Uh, more so even for angle side angle and angle angle side, you'll notice they both have two angles, except one of them uh, has the side in between and the other one does not. So two angles with a side that connects them and then the other one has the two angles but then there's a side that's not connecting them. All right, so uh, these are uh, five that you should review. Uh, we're going to move forward uh, practicing uh, using these. I'm going to assume you kind of know them uh, or you're referencing, you're going back and looking at these. And so what we're going to be doing is um, building up to writing some type of proof. And the first step is just understanding how do we even write um, a congruent statement for two triangles. So uh, here's our first example, and there's just a few uh, we're gonna go over. So here's two triangles with some measurements given to us. Uh, and we're gonna determine if they're congruent or not. If so, then let's name those, those triangles and give a reason or a supporting theorem. All right, so uh, in this case, we have triangle TRI. TR, 
right? So that's TRI, that's this triangle. And we're trying to, we're gonna say that they're congruent, it's congruent to this triangle. Um, and so the question is, does it matter if the order of these letters? So if I say A, G, N, is that okay? Or should I say N, G, A, or A, N, G? So there's different ways we could, we could name this triangle. It does matter on how we name it, because it has to match with these letters on the other triangle. So in this case, we started with T, R, I, and some things I notice are that R is the right angle, and that's the middle point. So I start with T, and I go to R, and I also know from T to R, it happens to be 16. So when I look at the other triangle and I see the 16 here, that reminds me like, oh, this is like T and R, which means this is like I. So if I went T, R, I, that's the same as G, A, N. So I'm gonna write, oops, let's use triangle, G, A, N. All right, so the order of the letters matters here. Now, what's, what's our theorem we're going to use? Now, the five theorems that we talked about, congruency theorems that I mentioned in the previous page, um, we are looking to see wh what information do we have. So we have a side. Uh, I have, Technically, I have an angle, and I have another side. All right, so I could use side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Um, or I could use um, maybe even angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So we actually have a couple of options here. Uh, I'm going to go with use the right angle. So I'm going to use uh, side, angle, side, congruency. Make sure you put the little congruent symbol. Looks like an equal sign. Looks like an equal sign with a squiggly line on top. All right. So make sure you include that. All right, second example. Here we have, again, two triangles. Uh, I haven't started this one yet uh, because I want, technically, that you could label these however you want. So when we, we talk about the first triangle, you could label this however you want. You decide the order of letters you want to use. So you could use N, M, P, or you could use P and M. Uh, that's your choice. So I'll let you decide, uh, or you could use the ones that I'm using. So I'm going to start with, um, I maybe I'll just, I'm going to look at the actual size of these. Let me just put them in order. So 6, 12, and 15. So I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'm going to start with this side, 6, 12, 15. So that's I'm going to start with M, P, N. So let me do triangle M, P, N. And now I need to match this with the other triangle. And so let me do the same thing. So 6, 12, 15. All right, I'm going to do that. So 6, 12, 15. So U, V, W. U, V, W. All right. So which congruency theorem? Well, if you notice, all we have are sides, right? Side, 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 side. No angles. So it's a... Uh, Good guess that we would probably have side, side, side congruency. All right. And then one more. Here we have uh, two more triangles. And you'll notice there's no measurements, no numbers given here. Uh, but they do give us some tick marks to look at. So we have some tick marks there. Oops. Tick marks, tick marks, tick, tick, tick. And even on the angles, there's tick marks. All right, so we have definitely a matching pair of angles, corresponding angles. We have 
um, a side and we also have another side. All right, so if I, I see that, I see, oh, we have a side, an angle, and a side. Have a side, an angle, and a side. Perfect, so they both match up. So I'm already thinking this is gonna be side angle, side congruency. Uh, be careful on this picture, it does look like a right angle, but we don't know if it is. So we can't say it has a right angle. So we can only use the information given to us. So let's uh, label these. Uh, we don't know which is the biggest, uh, but, so, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, let's just pretend L and R is the shortest one, and then LN, and then RN. So I'm gonna go R, L, N. So R, L, N. And then on the other one, I'm gonna try to match them up. So this is gonna be C, A. That looks like the shorter side. And then, um, oh, C, A. Oh, I didn't do a motor. So R, L, N. So the ones with the tick mark, C, A, B. And so I'm going to do triangle C, A, B. All right. And so in this case, uh, I think I mentioned this is probably going to be, this is side, angle, side. Right? Side, angle, side. This is a side, angle, side. So side, angle, side, congruency. All right, make sure again you include that congruency symbol. All right, the next ones, I'm not going to go through these, but I'm giving them to you. Uh, this is for you to practice. Um, this is something I can go over in class. Uh, if you try this on your own, and I could uh, give you some feedback on your work or maybe the, the answers as well. All right, so uh, that's it for these notes. Uh, go ahead and try to do these uh, problems if you can. All righty, thanks. Uh, you'll do these exactly like the previous examples. You're trying to write congruency theorems. Uh, if for some reason they're not congruent, if you feel like they're really not congruent, then you could go ahead and say that they're not. But I'm pretty sure most of these, um, most of them are. I think there might actually be one that isn't, So at least one. So let's see what you come up with and let me know. Thanks.